good morning students i welcome you all for the new academic year 2020-21 my name is rakesh singh chillin i will take science and today i will begin with chapter number 4 current electricity and magnetism this is very very important chapter children you will find the same chapter in 9th and 10th standard so please listen carefully today i will cover the few topics from this chapter that is constituent of an atom charge objects static electricity moving charges potential difference current electricity and dry cell so children if i will ask you a question that what are the constituent of an atom first thing what is atom atom is the smallest part of an element tiny part of an element children if you will see the structure of atom it looks like a solar planet like in solar planet we have sun in the center and around that sun there is a orbit in which the other planet takes the revolution in the same way you will find the structure of the atom in the center there is a nucleus which have charged particles like protons and neutrons around this nucleus there is a orbit in which the electrons takes the new revolutions so children inside the nucleus there is proton and neutron and outside the nucleus there is a electron so this is the answer of constituent of an atom children as you know that electrons are negative charge and protons positive charge then what about neutrons children it has no charge that is why we say that that atom of any element is always have no charge that is called neutral atom is always neutral why because the negative charge and positive charge both are equal number of electron and number of proton both are equal that is why atom of any element is neutral children okay if i will ask you new question to you children that what will happen if you will rub silk cloth on a glass rod this already you have done in seventh standard right if you will rub glass rod on a silk cloth so there is a transfer of charge children see silk cloth and a glass rod both are having the charges negative and positive but when you will rub the glass rod on silk cloth then the negative charge from the glass rod get transferred to the silk cloth then what is remaining on the glass rod excess of positive charge and that silk cloth excess of negative charge so children this is due to the transfer of charges we have two types of charges children one is called as a static which is temporary and second is 
moving charges means the charge which flow but it is possible children it can flow like this only no my dear children it required for example for stationary object if you want to move so you have to apply force similarly if you want to move the charge then what you will do you have to apply potential difference so to understand potential difference i will give you a very good example for example number 1 like water or liquid flow from higher level to lower level or i will say another example heat always flow from a body at higher temperature to a body at lower temperature in the same way my dear children the positive charge flow from a point of higher le electric level to a point of lower electric level means if you want to transfer or if you want to move electric charge then we required potential difference like in your house you have water tank when you open the tap what will happen water comes out why because the tank is at higher level and tap is at lower level same way in electricity the charge flow from higher level to the lower level got it children now as you can see in your textbook page number 23 they have given two figures they have given children two figure in first figure in first figure you can see that bulb is not glowing why i will tell you reason but in second figure the bulb is growing why because in first figure the current is not flowing but in second figure the current is flowing so why the current is flowing children because in the second figure you can see that there is a battery there is a cell you can see in the textbook there is a two lines small and big the bigger line indicates the positive terminal and the smaller one indicates the negative terminal because of this battery because of this potential difference higher level and lower level the current flow through this wire this black color line is a wire so i hope all of you have understood the meaning of potential difference children this potential difference is a scalar quantity and its a unit is volt got it children so i hope that all of you have understood the meaning of potential difference it is a scalar quantity its a unit is volt and it is given in uh, the volt is given in the honor of scientist alexandro okay who discovered this alexandro so to give him honor we write volt as a unit of potential difference now children i will tell you about the electric current first i said potential difference now electric current children in the sky when the clouds strikes or during the collision of the clouds what happens lightning it falls on the ground same way in the wire when the charges flow from one terminal to another terminal it is called as a 
electric current. So electric current means what children? It is the flow of charged particles or you can say it is the flow of electrons. Like potential difference, electric current is also scalar quantity. Its a unit is ampere. Okay children, so keep in mind what unit and what is electric current. Again, I'm telling you, electric current is the flow of charged particles or it is the flow of electrons. What is the unit of electric current in SI system? It is ampere or you can say coulomb per second. Okay, children, who will tell me? The source of water. The sources of water. Children, answer is river, pond, many things. Similarly, what are the sources of electricity? Children, we have many sources for electricity. But we will not talk about all. We will concern with your chapter. So, we will talk about the electric cell. Now children, there are many types of electric cell in the market. Right? Like we have dry cell, we have lead acid cell, we have button cell, nickel cadmium cell. All these are the different types of cell. But today, I will discuss only one cell that is dry cell. The dry cells means the battery which we are using in our house for in remote controls, TV remote control, torch, wall clocks, whatever batteries you are using that everyday children, it is a dry cell. Now how it functions, what is the uh, inner structure of that uh, dry cell that I am going to explain you. As you can see children in your textbook, page number 24, they have given the inner part of the dry cell. This dry cell, if you see, it has two terminal. The upper one is called as a positive terminal and the lower one is called as a negative terminal and inside this, when you will open this, that red color everyday cell, so you will find whitish color, metal layer. This is nothing but my dear children, it is the zinc metal layer which acts as a negative terminal. And again when you will break that layer, that whitish layer, so what you will find? You will find the another layer inside that. Got it? Also, inside this children, you will find the electrolyte, which is filled inside between the, these two layers. Okay? The zinc layer and the other layer. You will find the electrolyte. What is electrolyte children? First thing, uh, this, uh, as I said that uh, uh, metal, zinc metal, act as a negative terminal like that electrolyte contains negative charge and positive charge actually this electrolyte is a mixture of two chemicals that is zinc chloride and ammonium chloride and also children there is a graphite rod inside see that black color part which is called as a graphite rod this is a positive terminal of the cell. A pest of magnesium dioxide is filled outside the rod. Around this black color children, you will find a chemical which is called as a magnesium dioxide. Now there are many chemicals, zinc chloride, ZnCl2, ammonium chloride, NH4Cl, magnesium dioxide, MnO2, all these chemicals, my dear children, 
react with each other and because of these chemical reactions of all the chemicals electric charge is produced on the two terminals when these chemicals react with each other zinc chloride ammonium chloride manganese dioxide which are present inside this battery when they react chemically with each other then what happen the charge is produced positive and negative charge is produced on the two terminals that is positive and negative terminal graphite rod and zinc layer and an electric current flows in the circuit and this way your that electrical device works out like your wall or your torches or your radios now due to the weight pulp used in the cell weight pulp means what that zinc chloride and the ammonium chloride the chemical reaction proceeds very very slow the chemicals which we have used zinc chloride and ammonium chloride it is wet and because of this wet what happens the chemical slow or the chemical reaction is very very slow hence a large electric current means it works that battery works for so many days that is the reason children obtain from this okay the large electric current can uh, means with the help of this battery we cannot produce a large amount of the uh, electric current why because of that wet chemicals okay so i have explained you children today that what are the constituents of the element what is static current it is a temporary what is a moving current it is a uh, uh, flow of electron you can say then i said about the current electricity then uh, what is potential difference a unit of potential difference electric cell and out of all the electric cell today i have discussed only the first one that is dry cell i have attached the video related to the explanation part so first thing you go through this video and second thing after watching this video children again you read your chapter thoroughly page number 23 and 24 and next video i will discuss about next video i will discuss about the lead acid cell and the nickel cadmium cell all different types of cell welcome dear students today we shall begin with a new chapter that is current electricity and magnetism chapter number 4 part 1 before we begin the lesson let's have a quick revision which constituents are present in an atom think student an atom consists of proton neutron and electron here in this picture we can see that the atom is filled with electron proton and neutron one more thing we notice notice from this picture is that an atom has same number of positively charged proton and negatively charged electron so an object doesn't show any charge though its atoms contain charged particles therefore we can say that plenty of electrical charge is filled in the objects around us here on the screen we can see so many objects which are present around us they all are made up of atoms which means these all objects consist charge what will happen if a glass rod is rubbed on a silk cloth when a glass rod is rubbed against a silk cloth it it gets electrically charged how do objects get charged think students an electrical charge is created when electrons are transferred to or removed from an object because electrons
electrons have a negative charge. When they are added to an object, it becomes negatively charged. When electrons are removed from an object, it becomes positively charged. What are static and moving charges? When all the atoms of an object acquire the electric charge, the object as a whole becomes electrically charged. When the charge does not move, the object is said to have acquired static charge. If the charge moves, then it is said, to that, said that the object has moving charge. In short, we can say static charge, which means they do not move. They are steady or stationary, which means in one place. Moving charges get transferred from one object to the other. These are negatively charged. Moving negatively charged particles are the electrons. Can this negative charge be made to flow? Can electricity be made to flow like water flowing from higher level to lower level? You have learned that a force will have to be applied to put a stationary object into motion. We get ele current electricity when electrons in an electrical conductor are made to flow. Now let's learn something about current electricity. A large current flows when lightning takes place from a cloud to the ground. While sensation is felt by us due to a microscopically small current flowing to the brain. We are aware of the current flowing through wires, electric bulbs, and equipment in the house. In the electric cell, the radio, or in a car battery, a current is produced by the flow of both positive and negatively charged particles. The next one is electrostatic potential. Water or a liquid flows from a higher level to a lower level. Heat always flows from a body at higher temperature to a body at lower temperature. Similarly, there is a tendency of the positive charge to flow from a point of higher electric potential to a point of lower electric potential. This electric level deciding the direction of flow of electric charges is called electrostatic potential. I repeat, the electric, poten ele electric level deciding the direction of flow of electric charges is called electrostatic potential. Potential difference. Similar to the height of a waterfall, the temperature difference of hot and cold bodies the difference between the potential of two points, that is, potential difference, is interesting to us. Let's do an activity. Take connecting copper wire and connect to the circuit as shown in the figure. No current is seen to flow in the bulb. Now connect in the same circuit a 1.5 volt dry cell available in the market as shown in the figure. Now it will be realized from glowing of the bulb that the circuit is flowing in the, the that the current is flowing in the circuit. Electrons in the wire flow due to the potential difference between the two ends of the dry cell. These flow from the negative terminal of the cell to the positive terminal of the cell. Conventional color, current flows in the opposite direction and is shown in the figure by the sign of an arrow. We will learn about an electrical circuit later in the lesson. In this figure, there is no current as there is no potential difference in the absence of, an, of any cell. Current starts flowing in the circuit as soon as the potential difference is applied. The unit of potential difference in SI system is volt, denoted by the symbol V. We will learn about it in the next standard. Think about it. How can we measure water flow emerging from a pipe?
can find it from the amount of water that is in liters coming out in a specific time period. How then is the electric current measured? Electric current is measured by the amount of charges flowing in a wire for a specific period of time. We have seen that electric current is produced with the, due to the flow of charged particles. Electrical charge flowing through a wire in one second can be called unit charge. The SI unit of electric current is Coulomb per second or ampere. One ampere, also denoted as one A, is equal to one Coulomb per one second. Electric current is a scalar quantity. Now let's learn something about electric cell. A source is required to produce a uniform flow of charges in a circuit. Such a general device is an electric cell. Various types of electric cells are available today. These are used in a range of machines from wrist watches to submarines. Out of this, you must be aware of solar cells. Main functions of various electric cells is to maintain a constant the potential difference between its two terminals. The electric cell works on the electric charges to maintain a constant poten potential difference. Now let's learn something about dry cell. It looks something like this students. We all have seen this. The dry cells are used in radio sets, wall clocks, torches, etc. These are available in three, four sizes. Now let's see the construction of a dry cell. This is the diagram of a dry cell. Take a lid dry cell and remove its outer coating. Inside you will find a whitish metal layer. This is the zinc metal layer. This is the negative terminal of the cell. I hope you all can see the negative terminal on the screen. Now carefully break open this layer. There is another layer inside. An electrolyte is filled between these two layers. The electrolytes contain negatively charged and positively charged ions. These are the carriers of electricity. The electrolyte is a wet pulp of zinc chloride and ammonium chloride. There is a graphite rod at the center of the cell. The grayish rod which you all can see at the center, that is the graphite rod. This is the positive terminal of the cell. A paste of manganese dioxide is filled outside the rod. Because of the chemical reaction of all these chemicals, electrical charge is produced on the two terminals, that is, the graphite rod and the zinc layer and an electric circuit flows in the cell. The electric current flows in the circuit. Due to the wet pulp used in the cell, the chemical reaction proceeds very slowly. Hence, a large electric current cannot be obtained from this. Let's see the usefulness of the cell. Compared to the electric cells using liquids, the shelf life of dry cells is longer. Dry cells are more convenient to use as these can be held in any direction with respect to ground and can be used in mobile instruments. That's it for to, uh, today's student. We shall learn about different cells in the next video. Thank you. So children, I hope that all of you have understood whatever I have explained and shown in these videos. You go through your textbook, read first two pages and remember some key, uh, important points like what is the unit of uh, potential difference, what is the unit of electric current, then what is 
uh, static charge what is moving charge what is potential difference just remember all this point and i will continue the uh, ch chapter in my next video uh, stay safe do not go outside thank you very much god bless to all of you